In today's tutorial, we'll cover everything you need to know when it comes to building a UI using the bottom sheet. If you're new to the Foldstack channel, please subscribe and I hope you enjoy this tutorial. We'll start off by creating a new Flutter project I'll call mine Bottom Sheet Guide. When that's done, we can then go ahead and open it in Visual Studio Code. And as always, I will just clean up the main file so that it's a bit easier to follow. We'll set the home of the material app to an empty scaffold. And as always, if you head over to foldstacks.com, there's a written tutorial with all the code that I'll be using for this tutorial. The first thing we'll cover is how to show the bottom sheet and the pitfalls that you can run into. We'll use a floating action button and in the on press, we'll call the show bottom sheet and give it a context as well as a builder function that returns a container that is all red. If you run this code and you click on the floating action button, you'll see that nothing happens. And if you open up your debug console, you'll see that it will tell you that there was no scaffold and sister found above your current widget. This happens because the show bottom sheet function uses the scaffold.of call, which means that the widget calling it has to be below a scaffold. To put that in plain English, it means that if you call the show bottom sheet function, it needs to be below a scaffold widget in the element tree. There's four ways that this can be done and we'll go through all four. And the last one is the one that you should prefer over all the others. Firstly, let's move the scaffold that we have into its own home view stateless widget and then we'll go from there. As you can see, this will still cause the same problem because the home view is, is still not contained within a scaffold. So for the first solution in air quotes, we will just wrap the home view in a scaffold again and you'll see that if you click on the floating action button that it actually works. This is obviously not maintainable because it means you'll have to wrap every view that you navigate to into a scaffold as well. The second most common solution to put the current widget scope under a new context is by using a builder widget. The builder widget will return a new context based on the parents one, which means that within that context, your scaffold is now higher up than your builder method. If you run the code now, you should see the container show up as all red when you press the floating action button. This, the third solution is not as elegant as the rest of them and it involves a global key. Instead of using the show bottom sheet function, which uses the scaffold.of call, we will get the scaffold state using the global key and we will call show bottom sheet directly on the state of the scaffold. To do that, we'll start by creating a new global key and we'll give it the type of scaffold state. And then in the onPressed function, we can now get the current state from the scaffold key and we'll call the show bottom sheet function. And for this case, it does not require the context or builder and we just pass in the builder without a name parameter as it is. The reason this works is because instead of relying on the scaffold.of call, which relies on the inherited widget structure, we are accessing the state directly, meaning that we don't need a scaffold above the current widget state to access the show bottom sheet function. And for the last and the preferred solution, we will create a new stateless widget and through the build function, it will get its own context and we can call the show bottom sheet function from there because it'll be below the current scaffold context. For the body of the build method for our new widget, we will put the floating action button code that we added at the top and we'll replace that with a my floating button widget. I'm just going to do some cleanup to remove the keys from the home view. And if you run and press your floating action button now, you'll see that the bottom sheet shows up and it takes up the full screen. Next up, we will talk about the sizing of the bottom sheet. The bottom sheet will always wrap the height of the root child that it has been passed. We can test this by returning a text widget from our builder and you'll see that it only shows the little bit at the bottom that the text takes up. So a rule that I usually follow is that the root of the builder will always return either a sized box if you don't care about the color or the decoration of your view or you can return a container and you always set a fixed height. So we'll set the height of the container to 250 and you'll see that that's all that it takes up when you press the floating action button. Next up, we'll look at how to know when the bottom sheet has closed. If we navigate to the bottom sheet function again, you'll see that it returns a persistent bottom sheet controller. So in the onPress function, we will store this in a variable called sheet controller. 
The sheet controller has a property called closed, which returns a future of type dynamic. What we can do is we can use that future and subscribe to the return call using the then function and we can print out that the sheet has closed. If you run the code now and you close the sheet, you'll see that in your debug console, it will print out that the sheet has closed. We are going to use this to hide the floating action button as it opens and to show it again when it has been closed. So we'll start off by changing our floating action button widget to a stateful widget and we'll add a new boolean called show with a default starting value of false. And in the build function we can now say that if show is true we will return a floating action button otherwise we will return an empty container. And since we'll be using the set state call to show and hide the floating action button, I would prefer to have it wrapped in a function that we can call easily and passing in a boolean value. So we'll create a new function called show button that takes in a boolean called value. And inside that function, we will use the set state call and we'll set our show value equal to the value passed in. Then in the onPressed function, after we've shown the bottom sheet, we can now hide the button by setting show button to false. And when the bottom sheet is closed, we'll call show button with a value true. If you run the code now, when you click on the floating action button, you'll see that it disappears while the controller is open and it comes back into view as it's being hidden away. And next up, just to do a little bit of styling and add a bit more to this video, I will be building this UI interface for the bottom sheet controller. We'll start off by moving the bottom sheet widget code into a new file called bottom sheet widget. We'll create a new widget called bottom sheet widget. You can make it stateless or stateful. I think I'll make it stateful in case we want to pass in values using the text editing controller. The main container will have no background or any styling attributes on it, but we will use the margin so we can have nice padding for our inside widget. We'll use the edge insets dot only and we will give it a top margin of 5, left of 15 and a right of 15. Then we'll set the overall height for the widget to 160. The child of this widget will be a column and we'll set the main axis alignment to center and we'll set the main axis size to max so that it takes up the full container height. Next up we'll build the white container that houses the UI widgets for the reference number and the button. We'll start by giving it a height of 125 and then we know we need to give it a decoration so that we can modify the color and set that to white. We also need to set the border radius. We'll use the named constructor circular and set the border radius to 15 and additionally we'll give it a one box shadow where we'll set the blur radius to 10. The color will be a gray of level 300 and we'll set the spread radius to 5. The child of this container will be a column that will house our text view and our material button. We'll start with the text view and we'll make a new stateless widget called decorated text field. We'll set the height of the root container to 50. We'll set the alignment of the child of this container to be centered. We'll give it some padding where we'll set all to 10. And then we can also set all the margins to 10. We'll give it a box decoration so we can set the color to a light gray using level 300 and we'll set the border radius to 10. The child of this container will be a text field and for the decoration we'll use the collapsed name constructor on input decoration and we'll have to give it a hint text and all we'll say is enter your reference number. Next up is the button that we'll be adding under the text field. Since we know that the button will have states, a loading indicator and a check icon at the end, we'll use a stateful widget and we'll call that sheet button. Then we'll go ahead and add the booleans that we'll use to determine our state. The first one will be checking flight which will start off with a default value of false and the second one will be success which will also start off with a default value of false. Now in the build function we can go ahead and write all the widget code knowing what the states of those values will be. If we are not checking for anything at the moment, we want to show the material button. We'll give it a dark gray color using colors.gray and we'll pass in 800. We'll just set the empty on pressed function for now. And for the child of this button, we will pass in a text widget with the title check flight and we'll give it a style to set the color of the text to white. And for the widget to show while we are checking the flight, we will depend on the success value. 
if this is not successful, we want to continue showing the circular progress indicator. And if the success value is true, we want to show our icon and we'll use the icons.check and we'll set the color of that icon to green. Now we can go ahead and add the actual state logic in the onPressed function. The first thing we want to do when we press this button is to set the checking flight state to true using the set state function. Then we will add a delay where we will wait for one second before we continue. To use the await call, you have to change your function into an async function. So make sure that you do that. And after the second, we want to set the success value to true. This will cause the green icon check mark to show. We want to have that icon on the screen for about 500 milliseconds. So we'll do another await with the future and we'll wait for 500 milliseconds. And at the end of everything, we will pop off the current bottom sheet to close it back down. Then we can go ahead to the bottom sheet widget and we can add the decorated text field and the sheet button as children of the child of the main container. And to tie everything together, you can go to the my floating button widget. And instead of showing our red container, we will now show the bottom sheet widget. If you run the code now, you should see your new bottom sheet widget pop up. If you click the button, you'll see a little loading indicator and at the end, you'll see the check mark for 500 milliseconds and then it will close back down. That's it for this tutorial. If you enjoyed it, please like this video and share it and please subscribe and I'll see you guys next week.